up is um, starting to get more dynamic with the way that we're constructing this, this data, right? So by data, I mean we have the radius modification of the circles, and now we're going to start to look at, well, how do I do this in a, a, a more dynamic way? Dynamic meaning that it differentiates throughout the, the sequence of, of, uh, of the grid datum. Um, <clears throat> so first and foremost, what we're going to have to focus on is the data we're giving it. Okay, so you're, this is sort of like the subset of that workflow cycle I told you about where we're constructing geometry, deconstructing geometry, and then reconstructing geometry, and we keep doing that, right? So um, within that, in order to achieve our goal of, uh, of, of uh, proceeding to the next step, we can choose to as we're you know, kind of learning the software, we can choose to either work forward or backwards, which is kind of nice, I think, right? It's a left to right program, but nothing says you can't start with the idea that you wanna um, scale circles, you know, like this, but not know how to do it, and then figure it out by going backwards, okay? So here, we, we kind of started with a circle and, and we gave it the grid that established, um, established where the circles are. Right, but right now we have this very, you know, simple, not so um, smart, and I'm going to use the term smart frequently because we we want to tie data and relationships together to create geometry, totally absent of ourselves. Okay, so here I'm going to replace that with a, a modification that randomly generates the numbers for me. Okay, so. Um, and, and I use the word random begrudgingly, okay? Because um, as far as design is concerned, there are very, very few cases where random is considered legitimate. So be careful with that, okay? This randomizer doesn't, doesn't just mean I'm going to make some random cool shit in the software and then figure out what the concept is later, okay? That's the part of Grasshopper that I can't stand and I think is invalid when it comes to design conceptualization. Now, um, in that respect, we're creating a random number generator to illustrate that information can be brought from some other source to inform what our modification process is going to result in, okay? So in this process, I, this is just my, my disclaimer, my warning that says, you really shouldn't use number generators. These numbers should come from something conceptually appropriate. Okay? Cool. All right. Now, uh, in order to do this, um, first and foremost, I'm going to delete the numbers. Right? All right. So um, now we're going to try to figure out how do I create a set of numbers that are going to modify all of these sets of circles. Okay? So um, clearly, I, I said the word set twice, and so you might want to go to the tab called set, okay? <clears throat> set has a panel that's called sequence, right? And it creates multiple numbers, okay? So when we create a sequence of numbers, you'll notice that random is within there, okay? Um, there, you can create a whole bunch of different types of number sets, and we'll get We'll, we'll really kind of crunch the numbers on this quite a bit throughout this semester, but the random number generator, when I drop that in, will uh, basically, if you look on the output side, it just says very cleverly and eloquently, random numbers, right? <clears throat> so um, those are our random numbers. Right now we only have one. Um, the way that the random number generator works is you give it a range. In this case, it takes the form of a domain, that's very that's a very very important word that we're going to use a lot. Um, but a domain is a range, and it has a minimum and a maximum value, right? So zero to one is this domain within which we can create numbers using this generator right now. Um, the number input is just the number of random values you want, okay? And then uh, the S is what's called a seed, okay? So this says it's a seed of a random engine. Basically what that means is it's just gonna 
basically, uh, if you go from seed zero to seed one, it's going to throw away your old set of numbers and it's going to give you a new set of numbers. Right? So you can jog it up a little bit, shuffle it. Um, so anyway, let's actually create this thing. So um, the domain then, if you wanted to, you could actually go there too and just, you could physically plug it in and work backwards if you want. It's up to you. Uh, generally though, I kind of try to figure things out before I make the connections. Um, so I'm going to start to work backwards and, and get the numbers I want first by dropping a panel in, right? So this is, this is my setup for when I'm analyzing something. I know the connection I want to do is this, but in order to save, and you know, Justin's question earlier was, you know, uh, do I need a good computer to run this? you don't really need a good computer as long as you're using best practices like this. Because if you create a logic loop, you might crash the software. So just, you know, if I'm doing this, you should probably do this too. Okay. So anyway, right now it's creating one number and it's a, uh, it's a 0.77. So I need to modify this to create um, a random set of numbers and, and change what my domain is. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, I'll leave my domain at zero to one. Well, no, I'll modify it. I'll show you how to modify it. So domain is found under math, which is a little, yeah, anyway, um, and under domain. So it has its own panel. And here we're going to construct a new domain. Now this has the domain output, which naturally is going to plug into the domain or the domain input for R. Notice, how, and this, I, I can't stress this enough because for new users, this hangs people up more than almost anything else. I is not necessarily correlated with R, right? So if you see an I input somewhere else or an R input somewhere else, it doesn't mean that it's R to R or I to I. Read the descriptions because the domain here has the tag I when um, the range, it's considered range in this case, but it still takes the data format of a domain. Well, I mean, the most important part is to understand the data. So see this like icon? That kind of tells you a lot about it. And the information below, where it says one locally defined value, zero to one. If it's saying something to something, that means it's a domain. Okay, so um, now we can modify this domain and change what its value is, and I'm going to use the params in a, another sort of different way. Um, I'm going to go to uh, input and use a panel and just make it really, really small. I'm going to call this um, my domain. I want to make it anywhere from um, 0.25 to 1.25. So I'm going to say 1 is going to be 0.25. Copy, paste, and then this is going to be 1.25. And then plug them both in. This number changed. It's probably a good time for me to pause and wait for you to catch up, right? Yeah, all right. So um, I'll talk through it first, though. So this number changed because now the random number generator is reading the domain range being created by the domain component of 0.25 to 1.25. Okay, so I'll give you guys a couple minutes to catch up. All right, so um, here's, here's kind of the, the more exciting part, and this particular video is running a little bit long now. Um, so I'm going to kind of do these last two pretty quick, right? So the number is fairly easy. It's just how many of them do you want? We can copy this panel and then we can tell it how many we need, right? So I mentioned we have um, sets of data. So those sets of data are read 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which means if we want to modify every single row of these circles, then we need to um, basically say, I need five of these. So I need to make five numbers. And when I plug that in, here are my five random numbers. Okay, 
And then um, for the seed value, um, you don't need to know too much about the parameters of seed. Um, basically, if you just put a slider from like 0 to 100, you're going to get 100 different variations of these numbers. So I can say 0 to 100 and hit enter. Pull that on. And now, if you look at this panel, as I slide this slider back and forth, you'll see it just keeps changing the numbers. OK? Why is this cool? Right? Right now, it's just creating numbers. Big deal. Well, when I plug the random number generator into the radius of these circles, now I can slide the slider back and forth and watch it change the circles in real time. You guys seeing that? So once you find the pattern that fits what you're looking for, something like that, sure. So that's 100 yeah, there, it's 100 different, totally different variations. Yeah, well, basically, the software is going to generate the random numbers the same way on every system. Um, there is actually a logic to it. It's just that for us as the user, it's not relevant right now. Um, and some, I've told myself that someday I'm going to look it up and understand exactly what it's doing for each seed. Um, but right now, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, someday. But so far, it's not relevant because random is not OK. So I don't use it very much. Do you think that limits the effect from below architecture? Well, because they were based on formulas and layering. Yeah, you're right. Um, maybe. <laughs> Theoretically, it depends. I'd have to look at it. Um, you might be onto something there. All right. So, um, but the word random never, I, they never said random. OK. Um, yeah, where was I? OK. Um, so there's, there's one more thing that you must understand about this, and then we're going to do a quick little closing segment before I release you. But uh, mm, all right. Yeah, I'll just include it in this one. Actually. No, I can't. I can't include it in this one. We have to do a separate video, so hang on.